Welcome in, Campo and Joe. Happy to be with you. Facebook Live. We always like being live and in living color. And anywhere else you might find us uh, via our social channels on 1010XL or listen to us. We appreciate it. Campo and Joe, Joe C. from XL Primetime, noon to three weekdays, and Coach Dave Campo. He spent time as an assistant here. He was the Dallas Cowboy head coach. And you, heck, you've been all over these parts in the National Football League, haven't you? Very fortunate. You know, I was able to, uh, you know, go 23 years in college. Mm -hmm. And then 23 years in the NFL. And fortunately, 18 of them in one place. So I didn't have to do too much traveling. But, uh, you know, 18 in Dallas, two in Cleveland, three in Jacksonville. Yeah. And guess where we're at? Jacksonville. It's a perfect time for you to say that because we're coming out of Thanksgiving. So we give thanks to everybody that uh, listens and supports 1010XL and us. And we totally appreciate it. Speaking of supporting us. Beaver Chevrolet does that, Uh, and they definitely want to make sure that they can uh, wow you, just like we're going to try and wow you with our podcast. Check them out on Phillips Highway and online at beaverchevrolet.com. Great deals, new and pre-owned. You're going to get an awesome ride from that Chevy lineup and then also the service and the people to go along with it. Now, let's get into this game, Coach, because I tell you what, uh, it, it, it it was almost like a nibbling game. And it's one of those types of games where one team goes down, they hold it, they hold it, they hold it. You stop them, they kick a field goal. And then the other team goes. And it was a close ball game. And Jacksonville, you got to give them a lot of credit for keeping themselves in this football game. So kind of pick up on that note. Coming out of a bye week, getting back on the football field, taking on a Lamar Jackson, who's pretty darn dangerous. And they were able to limit that team to field goals. Well, the one thing they did for sure is uh, they simplified what they were doing on defense. And the Mm -hmm. one thing that you have a plus with when you're playing a team like Baltimore, Mm -hmm. you know, Baltimore is simple. You know, they've got, they're going to have two tight ends or a a tight end, a fullback, and two wide outs, three tight ends. Mm -hmm. So it's not a game where it's a spread the field Mm -hmm. and you got to have a bunch of great athletes out there defensively. So what they did was they incorporated some new stuff, but it was simple. You know, put an extra linebacker in there, keep Mm -hmm. uh, only one corner in the game, two safeties, and five linemen. You know, they did some things with that, which against that team was very effective. And I think when you simplify, they made too many mistakes Mm -hmm. in the game before right. this one. And uh, they did do that, and that's what kept them in the game. And they played great inside the 20-yard line, and that's one of the keys. They will bend but don't break. Yeah, and I like that because you're looking at a football team that's trying to evolve, particularly on the offensive side with Trevor Lawrence and company. But on the defensive side, they're trying to evolve as well. Brand-new defensive coordinator, probably taking a, a, a few lumps here and there with some of the decisions that he's made. Guys that had to be sat down. Devin Lloyd had to be sat down. Chad Muma had to be uh, brought in, increased his role. Uh, And Andrew Wingard increased his role. Those were some key decisions they had to make. Well, no question. And and again, you know, there's a lot more young players Mm -hmm. on defense than there is on offense. And so when you've got young players, if you try to do too much, young defensive coordinator, uh, first time calling the shots Mm -hmm. with, you know, he he has a wealth of knowledge, all the different things that can be done. And I think they were doing a little too much. And they they pared it down Mm -hmm. to where they they got guys on the field that could just play football rather than doing a lot of thinking. One of the uh, deals they made, you know, uh, Lloyd was struggling, has Mm -hmm. been struggling a little bit. I think some of it is mental, mental. Mm -hmm. And they made the decision to play Moomer a little bit more. Moomer, you know, took a little pressure off Aluakan to not having to line up guys. Which and is, and Aluakan had a great game. Right. No one should dismiss that. That's no, important. Uh, discipline. Yeah. You know, discipline. Moomer, uh, the thing that strikes me about him is he's not quite as good an athlete as Lloyd. Right. But he's one of those guys that if he asks to do something, he knows exactly what he's doing. He's going to be there. And that consistency takes the pressure off of other people. Yeah, and I think you, if you simplify it, you're going to make it easier for everybody. You might make it easier for the other team, but you and I, I couldn't help but ask Coach this question. Hey, Coach, if they simplify it, isn't it going to be easier for the other team? Well, it actually worked. It did work, and it was a smart plan. Well, and, and to be honest with you, I really enjoyed watching the game because that's what we did in Dallas for mm-hmm. the whole time. You know, I was a conservative defensive coordinator. Mm-hmm. We had great defenses. We allowed teams to move the ball a little bit between the 20s, but when we got outside the 20, mm-hmm. that was our that was our territory. Yeah. And, and we forced a ton of field goals, 
won a lot of football games that way. So I'm, I like what I see there for sure. Yeah, and you know, just real quick, and we're going to get over to the offensive side, but if you think about all the guys that are brand new, it's not easy. Brand new defensive coordinator. You had a number one overall pick in Trayvon Walker that's trying to find his way. Cisco, you could call him. He is a first-year starter because he wasn't a starter uh, at the beginning of last season. You can go down the line with Aluakon, Foley Fatakasi, all the guys that have been brought in or have been drafted. You're looking at more, more than 50% of that defense is brand new, all trying to figure out how to work together. And I think that's a, that's a definite factor. Yeah. You know, uh, and, and then when you bring a system in that you know, mm-hmm. you got to make sure that they know right. the system. And that's one of the things that I think, uh, you know, I think they have a good defensive staff. Mm-hmm. You know, when there's a lot of mistakes being made, I was there in training camp. I watched the guys coach. Mm-hmm. I know they've got coaches that can teach. Well, there's only one answer to that. Simplify, right? Because you know they've got some talented guys over there, and you've got to make sure they know what they're doing. And and it's not because the coaches aren't coaching them. I've seen them work. Right. So you know the the obvious situation is to don't give them as much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. So we're going to go back to the defense as we go along, but let's hop over to the offense because this might have been a, a, a defining moment, a coming out party. However, you want to title it up for Trevor Lawrence. He has strung together strong performances, but this was a win, and it was a win in a big way with him going down the field, 75-yard drive when they needed it most. They score. They go for two. They get it. Let's jump in on that side of the ball. Well, first of all, that drive was as, as pretty a drive as you'll see in, in, in football, period. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm, I'm big on the fact that you don't leave a lot of time on the clock for a good quarterback in this right. league. And and that is a perfect example. No timeouts, overcame a sack, overcame an off uh, of a false start. Yeah. M- made two fourth down throws and uh pressure the offensive line did an excellent job. Uh and and even with some pressure uh Trevor executed. Yeah. And you know, to be honest with you, that's probably the best game he's had and it just boosts the confidence not only of him but of the play, of rest of the players and the coaching staff. Oh my gosh, yes! And remember, that was a sack fumble. Luke Fortner gets a lot of credit for That's that. That's correct. Yes. Yeah, because he that ball was punched out, and Trevor might have been the the one that they would have blamed, even though he got hit really hard. Uh, anyway, they end up taking care of business. And the other part of it is that Zay Jones has started to come up really big on the receiving end. But all three guys, Kirk made a huge catch, a third and 21 throw that was big time from Trevor to Zay, and then Marvin uh, getting a large percentage of his leg down to make sure that that was a called touchdown. Well, th- th- with this team, that's what you got. You know, you got a committee of receivers. Mm-hmm. You don't have a bona fide Chase or Jefferson mm-hmm. or call, uh, uh, the guy Cooper with Cup, L.A., yeah, Cooper yeah. Cup. Uh, they don't have one of those guys. But they have guys that can make plays. And if you remember, a couple of games ago, Jay, uh, had Zay Jones mm-hmm. had eight catches. Oh, yeah. So he's done this before. Yeah. yeah. And, and they get themselves open. Zay made an outstanding catch in that last drive, mm-hmm. one-handed. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they've got some guys that can make plays. you got to get them into the right spots and go. One of the things that really kind of impressed me when I listened to Doug Peterson at, in his press conference at the mm-hmm. end, when it was – what I call nut cutting time. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, at the end, he said to his offensive guys, you know, that are kind of they're talking together on the sideline between plays. Uh, he said, "When we go here, we want to think about players, not plays. That's Let's great point. we know we can throw in a bunch of trick plays and this and that, but when it comes down to it." We've got to get the ball to our guys that can make plays. And that's what they did. And that's what you have to do in this league. And that's putting opinion. trust in the player. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. That's basically saying, I can I can only do so much. I can scheme this up. But you've got to beat that guy. Well, we've talked a lot. Uh, Matt Hayes on the primetime show mm-hmm. brought this up a long ways back. Mm-hmm. That when Trevor Lawrence has such a strong arm, when he throws any kind of an out pass... If he's accurate with it, it mm-hmm. cannot be stopped. Mm-hmm. Even if a guy's pressed up on a corner, right. if he fires that thing, they can't react to it. Well, the touchdown pass to to Agnew, mm-hmm. quick out. No one was going to catch. Bam. Yeah. 
And then the two-point play, same play on the other side, a little yeah. different way of running it, bam, touchdown. They can't stop that play. Now, does he does he hit both left and right sideline play as well? Because there was a question on XL Primetime, and, and, and I don't even remember who it was, but someone was questioning whether or not he could do it to both sides of the field. I think he can. Oh, he can. He can throw. You know, there were a couple of those outs yeah. during the course of the game on the last two drives. Right. One was on the left, two of them on the right. He could throw them all. And his footwork has gotten better. You know, these are the things that I think every Jaguar fan is probably picking up on. We're picking up on it. He seems to be a little more poised under pressure. And that may be just something that's real easily said, but much harder to do. He was forcing throws. He might have been making bad decisions earlier in the season. Now his footwork's better. His accuracy obviously is on, and he's making those big times. Yeah, and and to be honest with you, that when you ask, you know, what does he progress the most on, in my mm-hmm. opinion, mm-hmm. when you look back, you know, we've always said that he's had some drives where they didn't finish. Right. Ten play drives. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, that's making a lot of plays in a right. ten play drive. Yeah. So it's not like all of a sudden he's become. Uh, an accurate thrower. Mm -hmm. He's been accurate in a lot of situations all year where he's made his biggest problems. Joe has been Mm decision-making in critical situations. Well, that's changed over the last three ball games, And I think that that's where he's made the most progress. Now, if you ask me what he has to continue to improve on, Mm -hmm. he's still a little bit slow sometimes, you know, making decisions quickly. Okay. For example, on the fumble that they got Mm -hmm. where he got hit from the side when he started to run. He should have run on that one earlier and the guy would have never had an opportunity to get back there. Mm -hmm. But he hung in there a little too long. If you watch the guys that can run, they look, look, if it's closed, Mm -hmm. they're going. That's That's that mental clock, right? Absolutely. And that's one thing that he will continue to improve on. He's better now. He steps up in the pocket. He, He does run when he's got the opportunity. But you know, those quick decision things are things that he will get better at with experience. Yeah, because he's definitely becoming a more decisive player, a more willing runner, and you're right. Things are just starting to click. It By no means is this a finished product. Right. And I also felt like I needed to point out to people, and I'll do it on our Campo and Joe podcast, that just because he's strung together three good games, the, the, the stat was he has nearly 900 yards over three games, nine touchdowns, zero interceptions, it doesn't mean that there's not a bad game around the corner. That's just the way it happens. Yeah. Guys like you, defensive coordinators, they're trying to scheme the hell out of how to how to stop Trevor Lawrence. That's coming, and we'll just see if he can weather it. Yeah, there's no question. I think he's a little bit better against the zone defenses, knowing where to go with the football. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are things that, you know, uh, disguising, that type of thing. Right. Uh, I'll tell you, the throw he made to Zay Jones mm-hmm. in that final drive, watching it on TV, they they disguised. They were in a three deep, okay, and they rolled to cover two mm-hmm. on that play. And for him, he had to make that throw quickly because it was a little bit of pressure. Mm-hmm. And he just the just the idea that he read that yeah. that quickly because against the three deep. The corner route is not there. It's gone. Mm-hmm. But with the two deep, it's in the dead area, right. and he made the throw. So he's improved a ton yeah. on reading coverages since he's been here. Yeah, that's processing quickly and making the accurate throw. And it was a bracketed coverage is yep. what it looked like. And it was just amazing that he was able to drop it in, given what we said before, that there were times when he was pressing just a little too much. Here's the other big part. This all happened without Travis Etienne on the field. Right. Think about that, Jaguar fan, because your your most, I, I think the biggest surprise coming out of the first half of the season was Travis Etienne. One was making plays, and he goes off the field in the first quarter, and Doug Peterson makes the decision. They think he's healthy enough to get back out there, but they don't put him back in because he didn't want to put him in harm's way. Bottom line is, Trevor did that without Etienne. Yeah, and, and basically without the running game. Yeah, You know, they only had like 40-something yards rushing. Yeah. And uh, if you remember back in, in, in the early part of the season, they weren't – he wasn't really dumping b- things off. Mm-hmm. Well, all of a sudden, Hasty catches five balls for yeah. – and a touchdown for 60 yards or yeah. whatever it was, 70 yards. 
those are all things that he's progressing with as he goes along, you know, to to know that I've got to get rid of the ball here. This isn't open. I've got to do this. This is not open. I've got to run. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, everything with him was backing up if he had to scramble. He steps up into the pocket now. You know, there's those are all positive things going forward. 15 of 19, 173 yards, couple touchdowns in the fourth quarter. That just tells you how big it was for him. And, and he might look back at it and say this was a defining moment. But anyway, he ends up with 321 yards. And, and I tweeted this out Sunday night that it was cool that Zay Jones and Trevor Lawrence were at the top of the fantasy stats at that point. Now, those are just fantasy numbers. But it ain't a fantasy here in Duval when you see that type of productivity coming from those two guys. As we said, there were a lot of other guys that were making plays. But you pointed out to me a passer rating over 129 with 37 attempts. And did you say that was the best in franchise history? Absolutely. Yeah. With a minimum of 37 throws. Yeah. I mean, that's 129 now. And you know, all the That's last. Doing work. I think the last three or four games, he's been over 100. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. that's a that's a that's going to be one of the tops in the league over a, a span that much. And and you know, again, it comes down to how many bad plays you make. He's making less uh, in that game. The team made less, mm-hmm. so that's how you win football games. So here's the number, Coach Trevor Lawrence has more games with a 100 passer rating. So far this season, has more games with a 100 passer rating or more than Josh Allen, Justin Herbert, Kirk Cousins, Aaron Rodgers, Dak Prescott, Lamar, Russell, Kyler, and Tom Brady. Number one pick in the draft. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's you know, there's been a lot of people saying that this guy's not going to do it. Yeah. Believe me. Uh, you've also seen uh, his his attitude changing too. You, you know, this is this guy's going to take over. This guy's going to be one of the best in the business yeah. before it's all over. Especially when he gets a few more pieces offensively. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I I love I love the attitude, the temperament, everything that he that he has along with the skill set. And he also got a little ticked off the other day. Yeah, he he threw the helmet, not threw yep. the helmet, but slammed the helmet down yep. after missing that fourth down. Yep. And honestly, that's probably the first time that we've seen a little anger kind of run through him. I loved it. Yeah, yeah. I think you got to have a little bit of a uh, moxie mm-hmm. at that position. Uh, in the long run, he's just like Peterson. He doesn't get flustered under pressure, mm-mm, mm-mm. and that's to me, you you throw a little bit of, you know, that tough leadership. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I can remember Troy Aikman yelling at his offensive line a number of times. Mm-hmm. You know, not, you know, other than business. Right. You know, it's time to get it done. That's exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. You it's, know, a, it's a get and, off the pot situation, and, and that's what the quarterback has to do as far as leadership is concerned. Mm-hmm. And I think this guy has proven with his winning attitude mm-hmm. that eventually he's going to win them all. Yeah. That's what I'm hoping going yeah. forward. And you know Jaguar fans are hoping for the same thing. All right, so let's hit a couple of other things. The offensive line. Let's spend a minute on them. Uh, we mentioned Luke Fortner uh, covering up that fumble, one of the best plays that you saw from oh, the football game. Huge. But uh, overall, the offensive line. I thought they did well. Uh, I think we, uh, we're we keeping him upright, mm-hmm. Trav- uh, uh, Trevor upright. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and the the things that was a concern about uh, rookie center, uh, you, you you lose your starting guard right early in the season. Mm-hmm. You bring in Tyler Shatley. He's been nothing but a positive. Yeah. You know he 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 helps Fortner. He takes care of his own business, and that's a tremendous. I mean, there's a reason he's been around in the league yeah. for as long as he has been. And he is gone now. The last couple of years. Uh, compared to the first four years, more starts in the last couple of years than he had in the first four years combined. That's big, uh, and it didn't exactly start the way he was hoping. He lost his job, at least most people thought he would be the starting center, lost that to Luke Fortner in a battle in the guard position, left guard, loses it to Ben Barch. Barch gets hurt, he stepped in, and he really hadn't missed a beat. No, and, and you add to that, this team we just played mm-hmm. defensively in the front, I believe they had five guys with over five sacks. Mm-hmm. Oh, they had some productivity. I mean, let me tell you something. And and they got four sacks, but they were 
almost cleanup sacks. It wasn't mm-hmm. like they just one time they ran by Fortner. They beat mm-hmm. Fortners up straight up. Right. But other than that, it was uh, you know waiting for things to happen. The one he was started to run and and caused the fumble mm-hmm. on that one. It's that's a sack. Uh, we really have improved in that area, and I give credit to the to the line coach. Yeah, uh, Phil, Phil Rauscher was a good hire. Yeah, Phil Ra- absolutely. Look, there, there, we can point to a lot of guys that seem to be pretty good hires. Phil Rauscher, definitely one of them. All right, now I, I want you to jump in on the idea, and we say idea, you have knowledge, the idea that this team could get on a little bit of a roll. They may not make it to the postseason. They may not unseat the Tennessee Titans at the top of the AFC South. But it's not impossible to think about that just a little bit. The Detroit Lions are next up. Tennessee takes on Philadelphia on the road. Then they play each other. Conceivable two-game swing. Then you finish out the season. Both teams play the Cowboys, Dallas, and bo- and I think they will see the L.A. Chargers, and they'll see the Texans, and this team will see the Texans. So a lot can happen. But I want you to take your story when you were 3-7 and seven as a football team in Dallas, and what did happen after that? Well, the, you know, of course, the first year we went 1-15. Mm-hmm. Very similar to last year with yeah. this team. In the second year, which is new to, to the coaching staff, but it's the it's. In, in my mind, right. it's the second year mm-hmm. be, with the draft picks and the combination of things put together. Right. Uh, we were we were three and seven going into the uh, L.A. the L.A. Rams at the mm-hmm. time, uh, and uh, you know things weren't looking real good. I, I honestly in the in the locker room didn't feel like there was a great deal of confidence. Well, we go into that ball game and uh, we beat L.A. and it, and it, they helped us. Uh, they fumbled the ball in a critical situation, and we right. took it in to win the game. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, the locker room was pumped up, and we run four straight. And then Aikman got hurt, and we lost the last two. But what it did was it put us into the mindset, hey, we can play with anybody in the league. Exactly. Now, this team is ahead of that, in my opinion, because I, I haven't noticed anything about this team where anybody was saying, man, we can't, right. we can't do it. We can't get there. Doug Peterson has done it three times as a coach Mm -hmm. when he's gone into the last part of the season and won four or five in a row. Mm -hmm. Now, is the schedule tough? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But I've said it right along, Joe, Joe, Mm -hmm. that I thought that this team, every single ball game for the rest of the year, will be close. Yeah. And when the game is close in the fourth quarter, if they have the confidence that they're gaining – they could win those games. So who knows? Yeah. Uh, this is a, a chance, number one. The only thing I'm worried about is the Detroit Lions, yeah, which is going to be a tough game. Yeah. But it's not out of the question that we could go on a run here. No. you you, you uh, The next two are on the road, and that, that can be tough. But you go to Detroit, you go Tennessee, then you come home for the Dallas Cowboys, and then after that you got to go get ready uh, for that uh, Thursday night game. Uh, which will be against the New York Jets, and then you get back on schedule, you know, trying to at least win another football game late uh, with the Houston Texans. They have to go there. They they can beat them. They need to finally beat them. If there is ever uh, an indicator that they have turned the corner, it's beating the damn Houston Texans. Yeah. Okay, they have to do that. All right, so before we get there, let's spend the last couple of minutes on the Detroit Lions because this is an improved football team as well. Dan Campbell's got them kind of believing a little bit of what they've got going on up there. What, what do you see? I think they're very similar to this football team. Mm-hmm. I don't think their defense is as good as ours, okay. uh, the Jaguars, to be honest with you. But offensively, they've got some firepower. You know, they Amon Ra, mm-hmm. St. Uh, Brown, Brown. Yeah. I was with at SC. Mm-hmm. And uh, that guy is having a great season, number one, but I'm not sure anybody could cover him one-on-one. So they have to be really careful with what he's doing during the course of the ball game. But they have other guys. They've got kind of a two-headed deal here. You know, Williams, the running back, mm-hmm. is pretty oh darn good too. Jamal Williams is at the top of the rushing scoring. There you go. So uh, they're they they've got some firepower on offense. Mm-hmm. And we're going to have to play a really good defensive mm-hmm. game. Now, do I think we can move the ball on them? They're thirty-second in points, mm-hmm. thirty-two yeah. last. Yeah. So we've got to score going into the game. And I think our offense, if you say which one has improved the most over mm-hmm. the course of the season, mm-hmm. it's our offensive football team. So yeah. with the confidence that we have, I feel good about them going into it. But again, it, they've got to play, and right. it's 
five or six plays that make the difference in the game. Yeah, but it's attitude and belief. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And, and they, they're a physical team. Mm-hmm. And, and I think we can be a physical team. Yeah. So I, I'm looking forward to the game, to be uh, honest with you. I, I was saying on the air that Josh Allen, A, he played – Two two games in Detroit in five days, and they they're not from Detroit, so he's probably like, where, where am I? Yeah, right. And but after the Thanksgiving Day game, he exhaled when he knew they finally had the win uh, in hand, and he was a beaten up dude. He yes. had been knocked around physically by that Detroit front, so they got to be real careful to protect Trevor. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, again, I I just feel. Uh, the game is going to be won or lost, and how well, uh, you know, whether or not our, our defense can keep them under control just mm-hmm. like they did with uh, the Baltimore Ravens. Yeah. All right, Coach, always good stuff. Look forward to it. We'll see if we're talking about a, an, an actual win streak. We could get back to that, which would be kind of fun. Uh, and we'll have uh, some posts later on on social media, so definitely check that out. Quick thanks to Beaver Chevrolet. Look for them online at beaverchevrolet.com. Right there on Phillips Highway, we say Thanks to Beaver Chevrolet and, and Linda uh, for wowing us because we just tried to wow you with some of our thoughts. Dave Campo, Joe C., have a great week.